السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته. Uh, good uh, evening uh, everybody. Uh, firstly, I just uh, I would like to to thank uh, the Geological Society of uh, of Oman for uh, organizing such a beneficial program uh, for students and the fresh uh, graduates. Uh, also, great thanks goes to the the society for uh, or to give me this kind of uh, a great uh, opportunity to share with you the the, the industry experience uh, of one of the hot uh, topics uh, nowadays uh, in the petroleum industry, I can say, which is the the geomechanics. Uh, before I start, uh, uh, Muhammad Al uh, Muhammad Al Amri with you is a geomechanist working uh, at Petroleum Development uh, Oman. Okay, so I will go for uh, I will go for uh, our session today. But if you have any questions, feedback, uh, please uh, write it on the on the live uh, comment uh, uh, there. So I will look at these questions uh, later on after uh, I finish my my presentations. Okay, so our session today is uh, is uh, is uh, is about what's the geomechanics, uh, basically, and what's the application in uh, and what is its application to petroleum uh, industry. Moving uh, forward to to our session today, we're going to through the the, the outline. Uh, of the present or today presentation. So let's go for big screens. I can say. Okay. So moving to our session. So I mentioned previously that uh, I'm, I'm going to touch base of uh, of uh, a geomechanics uh, or ABC of the geomechanics. Uh, including what's the geomechanics, uh, uh, why we are doing the geomechanics actually, and where we use the geomechanics in the oil industry. Uh, the second pillar of, of my presentation is about the, the applications of, uh, of the applications of the geomechanics and uh, what's the, basically the where we use this uh, the geomechanics uh, stuff. Okay, so let's start with the definitions of the geomechanics. So what's the geomechanics? Actually, the geomechanics is consisting of, of two words, as you see here. We have uh, uh, geo, which means the, the earth, rock, or any material, or any geomaterial, they can say. And the second word is the, the mechanics. So, and you know, the mechanics is, the, is one of the, the engineering discipline in, in, in life. So, with you, if we go to the basic definition, which actually we are studying the, the, the mechanics, uh, mechanics uh, responses of the rock or, or the earth itself. It's like a, a geophysics, for example. So, we have a geo and physics. And actually, we are studying the physics properties and physics responses of the rocks itself. If we move into the the, the scientific uh, scientific uh, definition of the geomechanics, is actually is we are it is study the responses of, of the rock to to what to the stresses and the fluid pressure change, which is called reactions. Let me simplify the, the definitions uh, here. Uh, actually, there is a, a principle in the in the physics where it says uh, every or every actions has an reactions. So actually, what we have do on the subsurface, we actually what do in the subsurface is is our actions. We drill a wells. We remove a fluids from underground, which is uh, the productions. And also, we inject fluid or and the steam into, into the ground. So these are the, the the actions. So, and the result or the reactions of these 
stuff is is we getting uh, we getting uh, as kind of the reactions in terms of the stresses uh, fluid uh, changes because of these changes the, the the rock get responses so actually we are studying these responses of, of, of the rock so this is the the symbol as this on the in the geomechanics uh, stuff uh, sometimes you hear about the different name which is called rock mechanics and uh, personally I, I, I see that the rock mechanics or geomechanics is, is almost the same in terms of the concept and principles. However, uh, the rock mechanics name started initially on the past uh, in, the, in the mining industry and then got uh, evolved with the time and they got applied on the, in the petroleum industry later on. Also, they, uh, our colleagues in civil engineering and uh, uh, in this in civil engineering industry, they they use the the rock mechanics in their uh, tunnel models, bridges, roads. Uh, but the, the name is a little bit different. It's called the geotechnical there. So it's just only the the, the difference the the, the different uh, in, in in naming. So moving to the other uh, slide. So the question, the questions uh, here: What the suitable time and the stake that we have to use the or the, the suitable time and stake we use the geomechanic? The, uh, the the quick answer is the geomechanic is everywhere and and every stage or every time. So imagine that this, if you have this figure and imagine you have uh, your, this is the timeline of, of your field, uh, starting with the explorations, uh, passing with the high production, the development stage, and uh, finally with, with the abandon, abandonment. So we have to use the, the geomechanics on all these stage. Is not only on the on the protection stage. Even on the when abandon the wells or the the, the field, the the geomechanics is playing a major roles uh, 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 there. Okay, so now the geomechanic roles. So you know the petroleum industry uh, uh, is one of the risky I can say and more and the most challenged industry uh, in the in our planet yani. so actually that we I want to highlight here where is the geomechanics are playing role in this in industry what are the the main things that at the end goal we are doing in the geomechanics actually the first ones we 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 try to reduce or minimize the risk okay and we are try to minimize the, the risk by you know doing some kind of the, the studies that at the end we're getting low impact and lower risk in terms of the safety I can say so we're looking forward for the health uh, safety environment and all of this stuff also the second uh, second objective we are also looking for creating the business opportunity in the simple way i will give you some kind of the examples here so we for example on the tight gas or the tight rocks we can not get producing from these rocks because it's very low or permeability and very tight so we are doing some kind of the hydraulic fracturing on it so because of this hydraulic fracturing stuff, we creating a, a very good oppor business opportunity on that. So this is the sim is symbol uh, as as that. Great. So actually, I did some kind of the quick exercise uh, by searching uh, the geomechanic uh, words in the in in uh, one of the popular online library of the technical publications in oil industry which is the one petro and i think 
most of you and all of you they 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 know this uh, library and this is what i found so i i limited by my my searching to 50 years back starting so we have a time in five years period in x-axis and we have a number of papers or publications was was published in that time and you see it's very clear that on the on the last uh, or on the uh, when you back to 50 years back or 50 years in the past we saw that there are limited publications in, in, from the geomechanic point of view. This limited or uh, low publications uh, is either because, uh, potentially because of the, the people or the industry was not aware of the geomechanic itself, or the, the, the easiest of the of industry at that time was, was a little bit, uh, or the, the, the challenge was not that much uh, there. And you see that with the time, the, the publications, the, the awareness get it more and more. And you imagine that in the last 10 years, you saw that this much of the publications was, was for the geomechanics. Uh, this is the is something is like an opposite of this one, because the people or the, the industry now is now the geomechanics, you get much aware of it. And the challenges uh, get also more in the last five, ten, ten years in the, in the petroleum industry things. And this is give you is like a growing importance of the geomechanics even in the nowadays and the, in the future as well. Okay, so now let's let's uh, go to or give you some kind of the more about the ABC of, of, of the geomechanic uh, uh, itself. To do any model, uh, either on the, on the geology or, or on the reservoir or uh, any uh, you can, uh, industry, I think you have to get and know the basic elements of that model. So in our case, to, to start or to, if we want to study any geomechanic application or later on, we have to, to get or to do some kind of the call the geomechanic model. So what, what's include this is the geomechanic model. Actually, there is two important stuff and or things we have to, to, to take in considerations or you have to know about them when you do the geomechanic models. The first of one is, is the stresses and the pore pressure. And this is stresses, we, we have to know the magnitude of it and the direction as well. So cannot just only have a magnitude without direction and it's not also applicable to have a direction without a magnitude. So sh should have both magnitude and direction and the stresses and the pore pressure. I will come to this later, uh, later on on the slides. Also, we have uh, the second pillar of the geomechanic is rock mechanical properties. So, as just here mentioned about the mechanical properties, the mechanical properties, which is the uh, how rocks perform uh, when the different stresses are, are, are applied. So, this what we're getting from these uh, actions and the stresses we call the rock mechanical properties. So, we have different names here or different properties of the rock itself. Uh, we'll come to that uh, later on and there on a little bit of details. Great. Uh, let's start with the, with the, some kind of the terminology. Uh, I mentioned, I mentioned the stresses terminology a lot during the, the, la, the last uh, previous slides. So actually what, what is the stress from scientific concept uh, or the scientific concept of, of, of view? Actually the, the stress is basically in the, the simple physics, it is the force, this is the force applied on the certain 
area okay so if we have just only a force it's just like a force we but if we are apply this force on the area and we're getting some kind of the resistance from the material itself it's called a stasis if we want to just apply this ones for a, something like uh, or translate actually this equation into units so we have force F which is Newton's and we have A the square meters here so we have Newton uh, per square meter so and this ones we if we remember that on the on the university or the high schools we this is like a pressure uh, unit so is a pressure is a is a stresses and that one that's why the the pore pressure is one of the the stresses we have to know so Newton per square meter is, is the pressure unit or the stresses uh, unit but in the industry we not use this uh, it's like for simplify just we use the the megapascal uh, the psi for, for for that so just taken on just taken from the slide is that what's the, the stresses and the difference between stresses and, and the force itself Great. So now we move to the the actual stresses that we have on the on the on the sub uh, surfaces. So we did now the definition of the stresses. Now imagine that you have you are on the subsurface and you have this kind of the cube. So what are the stresses that we are looking for for that cube? So we have an over burden stress, and sometimes it's called vertical okay because it's coming from the vertical ones for vertical layers or vertical layers and actually we have two horizontal stresses it's called maximum and minimum called maximum and minimum because of, of uh, it's from i can say from the magnitude point of view okay but sometimes you you will you will see that there is sigma one sigma two and sigma three is almost the same so but one and two and three is based which one is is higher than the others okay and these three are, are perpendicular to each other so if you know the if you this one is easy easiest one okay just let me check it to the pointers So this is the vertical one, and this is two horizontal. So all of these three are perpendicular to each other because we are looking at the three D things. Okay, the source of these ones is is not uh, human. It's it's like it's natural stresses or uh, the source is the geological process, tectonic and deposition from from the long time. So it is there. Also, we have another one, another stresses, which is the pore pressure, which is same. It's called reservoir pressure, sometimes. Okay, and this is is like it's always is it because it's a stresses and basically on the, on the scientific point of view. And this is the the sources, which is the the fluid inside the pore spaces. The things that I want to to highlight here, the pore pressure is the this is the the only it's not the only difference. This is the one of the difference that between the geomechanic on the oil industry and the geomechanic in the mining, because on the mining they have stresses, they have properties, but the pore pressure is not there. So they're making little the, their life a little bit easy, rather than the the, the petroleum industry. So even in the geotechnical, which is in the civil engineering, they don't have this, uh, this ones. Also, it's not all the stresses are, are, are there. Great. Uh, so I hope it is uh, uh, it's clear. Uh, so things that taking from this slide, it just we have three stresses and we have the plus the pore pressure as well within it. OK. Um, so the units here are the stresses 
pressures, PSI, MBA, KBA, kilopascal, all of these are, are the unit of, of the stresses and the, and the pressure as well. Great. So now, actually, why we should care about the, the, the forces itself or the stresses, I can say. So now if we get, or if we, if we example, if we apply a stresses on the, one of the any materials, which is the actions here, will cause changes. Changes, maybe we apply stresses on the, this material, so we get it increasing on the length or the changing on the length, or maybe when apply the stresses, we get a change on the shape, or maybe when apply the stresses and actions, we getting reactions on the in the volume itself. These changes, it's these changes is called strain. So this is the the difference between the the, the stress and the strain. So a lot many people just they saying oh so what's the difference between the stresses and the strain? It's basically the stress is an action, and the strain is reactions or the changes. Changes in different way. However, yes. okay. So this is the the main things. Uh, so there is a relation between the stresses and the, and the strain as well. Great. Uh, then there is one concept that I want to to highlight here, which is the the you you will hear about something is called the failure. So failure is the is not only in the petroleum industry or in the scientific point of view. So failure in every way. So taking this ones as as a, as a statement, generalize the statement. So when the stresses exceed the strength of the material, even on the on the human itself, we get a failure. So. And that's why we are, are as geomechanics, we're looking at the failure from different aspects. And that's why we need the stresses and we need the strength. So, when the stresses exceed the strength that you are changing on the equilibrium of, of the material itself. However, if the, the strength is more than the stresses, which is normal, uh, we, we are saying that we are on the equilibrium it's not only in the oil industry, even on the, any any particular of industry of of, of our uh, normal life uh, uh, stuff. So just here, I want just to 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 get the difference between the stresses and the strength here, and what's the relation between the stress and strength in terms of the failure uh, uh, stuff. Good. So now we moving to the. Interesting uh, uh, elements here, which is the rock mechanical properties. So, this is the second pillar of, of the, the geomechanic uh, of the geomechanic uh, geomechanic model. I can say. So we have two types of the of the of the properties. Actually, in the mechanical properties we have one is called elastic, and the one is called it's. it's failure and the strength uh, uh, properties. Simply, we have two parameters or two properties in the elastic. Actually, there are more, but here just I, I put it two just for simplify and the most common ones. We have a Poisson ratio and the Young model. So actually the Poisson and the Young is the personal, the personal name and this is the just the properties so these two parameters is because i said that before there is a relationship between the stresses and the strain so we have stresses and actions a strain as reactions so the relationship between stresses and strain will give you yeah, this one's young model is and the the, uh, the relation between the strain itself is is we, we have a ratio actually that this is uh, these two are measured. We can measure it on the lab using the core data or or, or core uh, plugs. We also we can, can calculate it from from the petrophysics logs. Generally, is not always, and not just for simplify things that these two parameters is using for the tensile failure. 
which is the I can say that uh, hydraulic fracturing uh, one of them and the cap rock integrity one of them uh, we'll come to that later on so. okay we have also second failure or second properties which is uh, called failure and the strength we have strength which is called sometimes unconfined compressive strength we have cohesion and we have friction angle actually this one is it's it's internally within the grains it's not easy to especially for these two is not is not is difficult it's not easy to, to measure on the lab it just we can calculate it and using this this means three using for the shear failure like uh, will pore stability this is the main the main parameter for will pore stability sun protections and, uh, and so on so it give you an example so what's the cohesion for example so we have from microscopic point of view we have grain and grain there is some kind of the glue in between is this like look like a glue in between which is the maybe we can call it cementation from the geological point of view and this is also we in the geomechanic point of view is called cohesion how much with that for example of high uh, and consolidated maybe this cohesion is, is almost uh, close to the zero okay uh, what the units uh, actually that uh, the cohesion and the strength is almost the same as as uh, stresses units and the pressure units friction angle which is then the angle radians or the degree is fine good let's just go to the poser ratio here which is uh, uh, one of the elastic properties so what's the mean the poser ratio so the ratio here is when you, when you know that when you hear about the ratio we 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 know that there is two things divided by each other with the same units the same stuff so we have both ratio we have lateral strain over the extra strain in other words we have horizontal changes over vertical changes as here so we have horizontal changes over vertical changes so imagine that you have two type of rock on the surfaces so it is, imagine this is it's not on the subsurface it's outside in the surface for example so we have two rocks okay and there is no constraint on from horizontals and one is low poser ratio like carbonate tight sand and we have high poser ratio like a shape and you imagine that for example if we are doing some kind of the loading from the top so what we get we get a change in the vertical and we get a change from horizontal also this one's for the shale for high poser ratio we are doing the axial loading or axial or uh, vertical load or stress we get this ones we have a vertical changes and we have horizontal change you can it's very clear that this was the high high poser ratio is the vertical changes are, are higher than the vertical or are higher than this ones and that's why if you do do simple or very simple math we're getting here at the, at the, at the, at the top so we're getting very high poser ratio. This is on the on the on the on the surface point of view. However, we are not on the surface; we are on the subsurface. So, for example, we have multi-layers, shale, sand, shale, for example. And if we talk only one sample from here, from here, not talk, it just at the at the at the in situ or at, at that uh, or in the subsurface itself. So, what you you see that there is some kind of the horizontal constraint so the the there is can the rock cannot change on the horizontal side it's only in the vertical side okay so let's just, let's do the the same experiment however we now we do some kind of the constraint from horizontal side on the same rocks so now The, the horizontal change is almost zero I can say so what's the or on the vertical side so let us go for first one we get this and we go for this one so we get it this so you saw that the, the now the the relations is getting different so on the here we're getting very 
high or the vertical changes comparing to this ones okay and that's why you they are using the, the boson ratio uh, or this factor on the, on to calculating the stresses itself so there is a relationship between the boson ratio itself with the with the uh, with the with the, the stresses so if we have this kind of uh, models we have uh, Boson ratio 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.2 for different rocks, and we have these models. I can say this model for the calculating the stresses, so we get the same. So SH is the horizontal stresses, and SV is the vertical stresses. So we, if assume that this is the uh, constant for all layers, so only only change that on the Poisson ratio. So which is the have high Poisson ratio, we're getting high stresses, which is have low Poisson ratio, we're getting low stresses. And that's why the, using the shale is one of the uh, key parameters that or the using for the seal as well, or, uh, or the cap rock. It's not only for because of the low permeability, yes, it is. Uh, and that also is reflecting to the Poisson ratio and the high stresses uh, as well. So this this is only the, the simp to simplify the the, the stuff uh, the stuff here. Good. So going to the young modelist thing. So it just basically give you like a tip or here, okay. So you can just take it. When you get you when you hear about something is called modulus in everywhere in physics. Uh, always it means the, the resistance great so the always the word modulus is it means a resistance okay so but it depends resistant for what okay another another tips i will give you some kind of the it's not the physics course here or lecture but just to i want just to link things together so we have an action so when you have any actions we're getting the reactions. So basically the action equal material property multiply the reaction or responses. Okay, so this is like an, a generalized equations you have to put it in, in mind to, to, to link the geomechanic with the, with, the, with the science or engineering. I will give you some kind of the examples in the electrical circuit. So we have an action is like a fault or a volt, okay? and we're getting the reaction as a current okay but what is the material property is the resistance so we know that ohm law is resistance equal a v over i which is the current here good if we apply this ones for the stresses so we have a stress and we have a changing the strain a changes so actually what we have should have on the x as a material property here we go we have a young modulus so basically the young model is, is the resistance to the actions which is the stresses to uh, to not getting this, some kind of the strain or the changes on the on the rock so this is basically i will not go farther than this one in the young model is, and i hope it is it is clear for, for you okay uh back to the stresses again so previously i said that on the on the geomechanic model we have to get the stresses and the strain so our uh, stresses and the properties and the stresses i uh, we have to care about the uh, magnitude which i talk about and the stresses and the directions so this basically we have to know the direction of the stresses for for many applications for the drilling where we have, where, where we will put the, the horizontal for example well where we have to frag and all of these things actually there are many sources we can get in the direction one of the sources is called the stress world map which is uh, you can google it on the you, and you find the, the stress map this is kind of give you the original stress directions it's not it's not uh, uh, for the particular place, space or uh, places so for example in oman we know that the horizontal stress generally in this direction in northeast but uh, there is some kind of the localized different in the in the in the on the he said uh, the directions on the other places so we have to take it carefully but other sources we can 
use the, the, the image on the, on the well, we get some kind of the features. And this feature, we give some kind of the directions, where is the minimum and the maximum. As I said, is perpendicular. All these traces are orthogonal, is, which is the perpendicular of each other. If we get one, we, so we can get the, the, the second one. It's just simple math. Okay, this one is just key points where we can find or what's the sources or measurement that if we have these uh, properties or this is traces, what the measurements we have to, to use to get these ones. So just I want to, you can read it for four uh, for, for seconds. Good. So now we move to the, maybe the second, second part of the presentation, which is the the, I can say the, the applications a little bit. So uh, <clears throat> geomechanics uh, is not working by its own. It cannot work all of the in industry and in the world. We cannot work. In, we have to do a, some kind of the team or integrated with the other disciplines. So we are is a geomechanics is is is, is an integrated one discipline so we have to work with the, with the reservoir reservoir engineering with the geology with the geophysics petrophysics actually we we are also working from our uh, with the, our colleagues from the drilling uh, department or the uh, drilling sections so we are on the on the integrated uh, great so previously mentioned that the geomechanic working on at almost at all the stages of the field life, starting from, from exploration to abandonment. But here I want to add another thing that uh, also geomechanical applications are, are with the different scales. I just, from the space point of view and from the time point of view. So we have uh, working on from the scale from the very tiny from grain and matrix, passing from the core, well, drilling the wells and from field regional uh, scale as well, which is in the, in the caprock integrity or the fault reactivation stuff. Also, we are looking from, uh, we are also from the time scale, which is uh, from the hours and the days, particularly the drilling. We are looking for uh, months and uh, years on the reservoir producing time. And also we're looking sometimes in the, in the, from the structure or point of view within the million or thousands of years. So we are a little bit wide in terms of the scales, uh, space, time, and, and the stages as well. Okay, so great. So why we need the, the geomechanics and the petroleum industry? Basically because we do a lot of, 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 of actions on the subsurfaces. I mentioned before we drill wells okay we remove fluids from underground we inject fluid uh, on the on the on the subsurface we heat it we cooling all of this this is kind of the of the of reactions that's why there is some kind of the responses of, from the surface point of view we have for example compactions when you are producing from a reservoir we getting the pore pressure get depleted so might the reservoir get it reduced, which is compactions with the affecting the subsidies later on. Uh, fault reactivations, we have uh, here some kind of this uh, fault uh, getting reactivations, and maybe will lead to some kind of the seismicity. And the seismicity either be on the small, smaller magnitude, it's called micro seismic, or sometimes we'll go into the, the higher magnitude uh, is going to have the earthquake so and these responses actually we we we, we translated or they translated to the operation risks on the, on the industry so we have a different risk we have from the capro point of view we have from the water flood and the hydro fracturing and we have during the producing production with the solid and the sand produced. So actually, this 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 
this slide will give you like a summary from 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 the A to, to Z in terms of the applications and the or the what geomechanic rules are 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 doing in the oil industry basically. Great. So starting with the sand predictions um, in terms of the applications. So what's mean the solid and sand production? So this is one of the applications. Actually, when you drill the well, we're producing from reservoirs. Uh, sometimes if, if these reservoirs are, are unconsolidated, we get some kind of the material particles or sand particles moving with the oil upward. And these particles maybe will be getting failure of the equipments, cost, safe, safety, and all of these things. Also, when this particles is accumulated with the time maybe we'll block these entries and we reduce the, the, the production or injectivity if, if the water flood. Okay so what we are doing on the from the geomechanic point of view actually we are studying the root causes of, of, of this sand production and sometimes we recommend it to have some kind of the sand control for example here which is to, to prevent uh, the materials to go inside or maybe we are uh, pushing uh, to optimize the, 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 the bottom hole pressure or the drawdown during the protections. So it is as simple as, as, as this. Hydraulic fracturing, as you know that the industry now moving uh, to the to more challenge in the, in the tide and the shear reservoirs. Uh, and if we want to get the protections in, in, from, from these tighter reservoirs, uh, in the economic way, I, I think the hydraulic fracturing is, is a very good option. Basically, when we drill the well, complete the well and the reservoirs, so it depends where we have to put on the, in which directions, then we have to uh, perf the wells, okay, using the, the guns, and then uh, uh, inject the fluid with the high pressure to create the fracture. And then we uh, inject the propant or the sand on this fracture to keep it open, and then we can produce. So why we care about this one? So we are, as you say, that the hydraulic fracturing is, is a failure, basically, but it's a good failure. So and that's why when uh, we have to 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 emphasize what the stresses or the pressure uh, we need to to getting to overcome the strength of the, of the of the rock. To getting this kind of the of this um, frag, okay, and also we have to understand the strength. We have to to know what's the amount of propant, what's the, the where we inject, where we perf, and all of this stuff. Also, we know to do model for how how much the length of this frag it is contained on the reservoir or will be outside. All of these things is 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 is, is in our in our. Uh, uh, agenda or our plate uh, to study that uh, stuff. Okay, uh, moving to the fault uh, reactivations. Uh, I hope that uh, I'm not uh, late on time. Okay, so what's the first the fault? Is the fault means is some kind of a discontinuity on the on the, on the subsurface of the layers. So. <clears throat> Sorry. So initially, initially, without doing anything, the subsurface are in the equilibrium state. This is keeping on mind is in equilibrium state. However, if you inject or we do anything inside this subsurface on the reservoir, we are changing the equilibrium behavior. So, for example, if we inject, for example, here we inject or storage the CO2. And we know that the reservoir is, is is hot, and we inject the very cold uh, stuff. So we are cooling the, the reservoirs. So with the cooling, we are actually we are changing the behavior or the the state of the equilibrium. So maybe the this cooling, the pore pressure will change, will be affected in the fault, and this fault will be reactivations. Sometimes we have low risk if this reservoir is only or this fault are contained on the reservoir itself. However, sometimes these faults are extended to the, the, the cap rock or sometimes on the surface. So if you get a reactivation, you, for example, you will passing the wells, you will deform the well, 
and you will get all the, the fluid in the reservoir will leakage to the surface outside of the reservoir. So we will lose uh, everything. So we will lose the production and also we we'll maybe will affect the, 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 the safety later on, so we'll, as you see later on. Okay. <clears throat> what about the steam injection? I think the same concept, but in either way, instead of the cooling the reservoir, we are, we are uh, heating the reservoirs and we, we get in the thermal stresses and maybe we'll, later on we get some kind of the cap rock integrity issues. Give you some example from the Canada is one of the field days they just in, inject a steam and then with the cutting they are changing the behaviors or the equilibrium of the reservoir we getting failure of the cap rock and they getting some kind of the blow out all the oil it just getting outside on the on the surfaces and you see that's how how much the production they lose uh, safety and reputation as well of the company itself and most of, on the top of that is the environmental environmental issues i think uh, this is the most important things that I think that all the companies, either small companies or big companies, are are, are doing uh, maybe every day. So is a drilling or wheel pour stability. So I just talking to this one of the publication. They are saying that the wheel pour stability problems cost industries between one to six billion every year worldwide. Imagine how much we are putting in terms of the cost in this one in the wheel pour stability. So. If you not plan it very well, or not drill the well in the safe and uh, the safe uh, in the safe mood, you will actually will be affected the, the business in terms of the cost and also in terms of the uh, pro safety reasons. So actually, our our things or our uh, application or our studies rules on the for stability in terms of the planning we'll do where we are uh, drill in which direction in minimum horizontal stress or the maximum horizontal stress verticals all of this also what's the mud system we have oil based mud water based mud and uh, what is the composition of this mud how much the, the polymer how much the pH and all of these things also we're looking the very important thing into the mud weight which is the we drill with and sometimes we are going to to, to involve in the operationally parameters uh, ROP, drill, uh, rate of penetrations, uh, torque, ROPM, all of these things are we are involved in. So mud weight uh, window during the drilling is very important so if you go and uh, drill with a very high mud weight more than the fracture of the, you will lose good losses and the fracture of the reservoirs. Maybe you will, you will lose the, the well. Also, if you drill with the low mud weight, you will get the collapsing and blow out. And we're getting this kind of, maybe we lose, the, it might be lose the well, or maybe on the, some kind of the safety issue we get. So I give you some kind of the example from, this is from the Brazil. They are in the 2011 by Chevron. Actually, they, they drill a well. They complete it. It's like a S-shape, I think. Okay. They reach the reservoirs, but they're getting the kick because they, they, they don't evaluate the, the, the pore pressure of the reservoir and the mud weight in the proper way. So more or most of the fluid or the oil in the reservoir getting on the on the on the well, they find easiest way during the fracture, for example, and they getting out to the seabed as you see here, and then to the sea, and we getting the uh, a lot of the productions amount of the hydrocarbon on the sea, environmental issues, and as well as. Uh, 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 the reputation of itself of of of, uh, of the company. Okay, uh, the most in, uh, uh, famous incident, which is Macondo well, which has happened uh, ten years back 
in the Gulf of, of Mexico. Mexico. So what's happening is getting blew out, and there is another another process, of course. Consequences: they have 11 people killed, and then five. You imagine the five million barrels of hydrocarbon of oil we getting slip or spill on the on the on the, on the ocean on the Gulf. Okay, we're getting environmental issues and all of these things it's because this is getting blew out. They don't uh, evaluate uh, maybe the, the poor pressure at the end of the reservoir in the proper way. Also, there is another another reason of that. Actually, there is a movie uh, talking about this incident. I think most of maybe a lot of you, or maybe major of you, will just watch this movie. It's called Deep Water Horizons. So I'm just recommended uh, just to see it and just see how 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 it's happened, what happened, and we can just uh, learn from that movie. And you can watch it and uh, and enjoy as well. Okay, the last slide before I end is just like there is another one. It's called subsidence or the compactions. So there is one of the major field is called ECOFISC in the North Sea which is the chalk or carbonate, very loose carbonate field. We're getting some kind of compaction and subsidence on the, on the offshore there. Okay, so, and this also happened on, in, in Oman as well, in the, one of the fields here. Good, so now we're coming to the, to the last uh, uh, two slides. Uh, take home message that uh, I want to take this Home. So in the subsurface are, are is equilibrium state. So any actions you have to do it will get in the reaction. So we as as, as a geomechanic we are we are studying this kind of the reaction and responses. Geomechanic model we have to know the stresses and the properties to, to do the any application or, or or studies. Failure occur potentially when the stress is more than strength. This is all this is the, the main principle on the geomechanics. We have to know the stresses and we have to know the strength of, of the rock to, to get it what's the failure, what kind of the failure, or to detect what's the kind of the failure as well. Also, the main take home message is just these two uh, figures or the pictures. So, we, the geomechanic is, is everywhere from the explorations, poor pressure, fault leakage. Appraisal, uh, appraisal with the poor pressure, uh, will poor stability, sand protection, uh, air in the development with motor flood as well, maybe with hydraulic fracturing. Some, but with the time, with the depletions, we get in, we care about the compaction, subsidence, and then abandonment in the subsidence and all of these things. So this is the main things that uh, that uh, that I want to share and give you some kind of the awareness at least for for this. Uh, are uh, not get uh, aware about the geomechanic itself. So now we are going to end uh, my presentations. So, so now uh, I'm just uh, would uh, to thank you for your listening. And if you have any questions, so please uh, stay it here, stay it here, and I will. I will go through them. And uh, thank you very much. Uh, Okay, so there is a, there is a question here. Is the poison ratio is related to the petrophysical uh, petrophysical properties? Uh, I think there is there is a relation. At the end, there is a relation between the poison ratio and the petrophysical properties. So when you have, for example, low 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 porosity, or um, generally when you have low porosity. Um, have uh, high strength, so maybe we'll be getting the, the very low poison ratio and the uh, first versa as well. Hope the, the, the answer is, uh, is, uh, is clear.
Okay, there is an question here. Uh, you did give in your slide an example about the application and incident outside Oman. What about, uh, I think, Oman? Uh, yes, actually, there is. Uh, we are. We are in Oman, we're doing this kind of the application. We do the Caprock integrity for the rectification, actually, because uh, we are on the EOR stage. So we have uh, many fields in Oman doing the, the steam injection. And um, actually, we are looking for, for that, for the Caprock integrity and the fault rectifications. OK. And um, but there is no, no, no incident. Uh, Hopefully, happen for from the Cabrock integrity and the fault. Uh, uh, there is uh, some kind of the, maybe fault reactivation in one of the compaction field happen in Oman, and there is literature uh, uh, review about uh, this field, and you can find in the publications about the Bal field, which has happened the, there the compactions. Okay, uh, there is a question here. What's the final product that could you help to optimize the well locations? Actually, we from the from the drilling point of view, we are we are uh, looking for uh, in which direction. Okay, we 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 have to drill some some because there is some of the direction that it's difficult to drill. Okay, and there's some direction are easy to drill because because of different stresses and isotropy between uh, between them. However, it is it is also depend on the the wheel type. I, I mean, for t sometimes we are uh, for uh, we are drilling for productions is a little bit different than than the hydraulic fracturing. Sometimes it's easy for to drill in the in the one direction. When we're getting to the completing the completion side when the hydraulic fracturing is difficult to, to break the formation. So we have to look to different aspects in terms of the, the, the drillability and the fracability as well. And also from if it's water flood, we have to look what's the spacing between between well and another well. So all of these aspects should be in place to, to answer your question exactly. Yeah, but the final product is, as I say, the, 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 the directions as well, and um, the, the spacing between the maybe the production producers and the injectors as well. And the, uh, at the end also for, the, if we have a frag, we have to look at the fragability uh, and the interference with the, with the near wells. Uh, what the main challenge that you faced in the drilling here in, in Oman? Um, actually, in the term of the drilling, that actually that uh, the depletion, because uh, with the time, with the poor pressure of the reservoir get reduced. So this is one of the things that uh, in Oman we are we are uh, get a challenge challenge of them because of the deplete, drilling the depleted reservoirs and also drilling on the in the salt uh, the salt area is one of the challenge because on the south man is affected by by the salt uh, by the salt uh, deposition there so i think this is the main 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 challenge that i i it's my in my head right now where in oman we do have an issue of the ground uh, subsidence I mean the ground compactions, so subsidies on the on the surfaces. So uh, uh, Ebal field, I think there is a many, and I have published uh, something related to the compaction as well. So you will find it on the on the SPE. You can write the compactions, and you will find uh, a lot of literature about it. Uh, Any public maps of pressure regimes of uh, of the basins? 
Um, actually, I'm not uh, aware about if there is any public maps of the pressure regime for the basins. Um, I don't think so. But um, I would like to, to have it as well if, if we if I get. Okay, I think uh, these are the, the, the questions. Thank you for uh, your uh, listening and uh, hope it was light and, uh, and beneficial uh, as well. Thank you very much.